Let's make a Bluetooth microphone, I said to myself. How hard can it be? We've already made a Bluetooth speaker, so making a Bluetooth microphone should be easy. So what are we doing in this video? First off, we'll discuss why this seemingly trivial thing is not trivial. Spoiler alert, you can't simply create an A to DP Bluetooth source and expect it to work as a microphone. We'll work around this limitation by using the Bluetooth hands-free profile. Another spoiler alert, this is very cool, but honestly, it's not great. Finally, we'll actually make a working wireless microphone. And then, at the end of the video, there's a nice little bonus feature that I think you'll like. We'll get started after this quick word about the channel sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay have been sponsoring the channel for a while. They offer PCB production, CNC and 3D printing, PCB assembly and much much more. I've made quite a few boards with them and they are great to work with. You can find a link to their details in the description. So what is the issue with the A to DP Bluetooth profile? We used this to create our Bluetooth speaker in a previous video and it was trivially easy. It just required a few lines of code with some helper libraries. What's more, you can also output audio using the A2DP Bluetooth profile. This also just requires a few lines of code. The problem is, my PC, and most probably your PC, is not a Bluetooth speaker. So it's not going to pick up our A2DP source as a potential input it can use. It's simply not the way the standards have been defined and implemented. This leads me to my nice troubleshooting diagram for future projects. Am I using Bluetooth? If the answer is no, it's going to be great. If the answer is yes, I'm in for a world of confusion. Now, I can hear you all right now saying, what's wrong with this guy? You can definitely have Bluetooth microphones. I've got a Bluetooth headset and it works with my phone and my laptop. Enter the Bluetooth hands-free profile or HFP. This is used by hands-free kits to communicate with mobile phones and now that we spend all day on Zoom calls, computers. The hands-free profile defines two roles, an audio gateway known as AG and a hands-free unit known as HF. We're going to turn our ESP32 into a hands-free unit so that it can connect to our computer, which will quite happily act as an audio gateway. This will then let us send audio data from the microphone to the computer. There are, however, several issues with this. The first is a fundamental issue with the codecs that are used. These are limited to 8 kHz or 16 kHz sampling rates. Now, as we know from our previous videos on audio input on the ESP32, 8 kHz is just good enough for speech but it's not great. Unfortunately, in my experiments with the ESP32 and my computer, I've not managed to get them to agree to the 16 kHz sampling rate, so I'm stuck with 8 kHz. My phone will however connect at 16 kHz, so it does get slightly better quality. The second issue is just getting this to work. I tried running the example in the ESP IDF and hit a number of problems, the main one being that it was unable to stay connected for more than a few seconds. The code is also pretty hard to understand. I have however managed to find an alternative Bluetooth stack that seems to be stable and has sample code that I was able to understand. The sample code was missing the parts required to get the microphone working, but I've managed to hack together enough code to get it to work. This is very much alpha code, and support for this kind of thing seems to be pretty rough at the moment. Hopefully it will improve over time. I've run up the code on my ESP32, and we are now able to connect to the ESP32 with my computer, and it shows up as an audio input and output device. It's pretty cool. The volume controls work and they send messages to the ESP32 and we can see it sending data in the logs. And as the computer recognises it as an audio input, we can record directly from it. I've recorded a few seconds of me speaking and some music. Let's have a listen. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the hands-free profile. It's definitely understandable, but it's not great. We can see this if we plot a spectrum of the audio. It's cut off at 4 kHz, so it sounds pretty muffled. This seems to be a limitation of my computer, as it does the same thing with my expensive noise-cancelling headphones, which also cut off at 4 kHz. So my computer won't do the 16 kHz sampling rate. So for me, this is not really usable as a wireless mic. Having said that though, we can do some fun things. I've got it paired with my phone, and we can make phone calls and play DTMF tones. We can also call this test number and we can get it to record the audio and play it back to us so we can see what the quality is like. One moment please. This is Ayla. Record your test message, then press pound. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Press pound. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Press one to re 
DT the record playback test. Press 2 for DTMF testing. Press 3 for real-time echo test. Enter as many as 75 DTMF keys and press pound for a readout. So we've managed to make a hands-free speakerphone. I'm not sure I'd actually want to use it for anything serious, and it's not really what I set out to do. I really wanted a wireless microphone. So let's have a look at alternatives. If we look at a proper wireless microphone that connect to PCs, we see they normally transmit audio data over UHF and use a USB dongle to act as a USB microphone to get the data into the computer. Now I'm not going to build that, but we do have an ESP32 which has Wi-Fi. Why not use Wi-Fi to send our audio? We did something similar to this with the Walkie Talkie project, where we used UDP packets to stream our audio data. Let's try it out using TCP sockets. I've set up some very simple code that runs a TCP server on port 9090. It then listens for new connections and streams audio data out to anyone who is listening. I've also created a very simple Python script that will connect to our server and play back the audio data as it is coming through. I've also set up a virtual audio device using some free software called Black Hole. This acts as a virtual audio device that will route audio from an output device to an input device. This means that we can play audio data to the black hole output device and then other software can record the same audio from the black hole input device. There's a similar piece of software for Windows called VB Cable. Let's give it a quick go. I've got the software up and running on my ESP32 waiting for connections and I've started up the Python script to receive audio and play it to the black hole output device. I can now just record the audio in Audacity from the black hole input device. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test to make sure it works. It works pretty well. Let's have a listen to what we've recorded. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test to make sure it works. Quality is significantly better. And if we look at the spectrum, we now get the full audio bandwidth of around 20 kHz. We've had to jump through a few hoops, but we now have a working wireless microphone. So I promised you a little bonus, so here it is. I thought it might be a good thing to do this without needing a Python program. So I've embedded a simple HTML audio player that lets you use your browser to play the audio. This can be served directly from the ESP32. Just don't forget to follow the instructions to upload the SPIFS file system. This will receive audio directly from the ESP32 over a WebSocket and play it back over the default output device. There is a slight limitation with selecting audio devices when you are not serving files over HTTPS or localhost. There's a couple of things you can do to work around this. I use a handy plugin for VS Code called Live Server. This lets you serve HTML files from localhost, which gets around this restriction, and you can now pick the audio output device you want to use. This is great if you don't want to use the standard output device and get massive feedback. Alternatively, you can add an exception to Chrome that will treat a particular URL as secure even though it's not coming over HTTPS. Just go to chrome colon slash slash flags and enter an exception for the insecure origins treated as secure. With that done, we can now route the audio to the virtual audio device and record the audio that is coming from the ESP32. That works pretty well, and we can do a similar thing to before where we record the audio using Audacity. We've also got a nice little audio visualizer. All in all, quite a nice successful project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.